Okay, so there's a lot of AI tools out there, and I mean like a lot, like a bunch load. And over the past seven years, I've reviewed over 300 tools and helped more than 250 clients pick the best ones. And after all of that, this is the list of AI tools that I use. So let me show you what they are and exactly how I use them in my business. By the way, I'm Joey. I've been doing this for seven years and AI and AI automation is all I do all day. So the first AI tool that I use pretty much all day long is my LLM and that's ChatGPT. I know, right? Nothing too surprising here, but I bet you don't use ChatGPT like this. So the only reason I would really pay for ChatGPT is because of projects. So that's where you can upload files and instructions, aka really system prompts. And the LLM is gonna keep this in its context window. And that's very important because every time that it's gonna respond to your prompt, it's gonna look at those things first before answering your prompt. So they are important things that you wanted to remember, that you wanted to take into consideration for every prompt that you're gonna have in this project. This is the place to upload anything that you want. And this really doesn't work as well if you start a fresh new chat every time you have a prompt because you would have to lay out this whole context every time, sort of try to engineer this perfect massive prompt that you have. And it's just a very inefficient way to use the tool. So again, projects are really the way to go. And this is really the main reason that I don't use any other LLM because they don't really do that. Things like, you know, Grok, Gemini, DeepSeek, these have pretty good models for just the one prompt, but they don't have projects. They don't have a way for me to keep all of the things that I want and context in a memory. The only other LLM that does this is Claude, and they do have an equivalent of projects. But if you look at the last few updates in 2025, Claude has kind of given up on the uh, AI assistant race that they had with ChatGPT. And I know that some people say that Claude is still better for creative writing, uh, but actually if you look at the latest update and how they perform on Benchmark, it's performing actually slightly worse than before. So the latest model, Sonnet 4, is actually performing worse when it comes to creative writing than it used to on the 3.5, for example. Like the company as a whole is focusing more on sort of coding and the AI agent, which is a great aim, but as far as AI assistant and an LLM that you would use on a daily basis, it means that I probably won't go for it. I also think that in the long run, ChatGPT has so much brand awareness that it's probably the safer, longer bet. And that's probably why Claude has kind of given up on this AI assistant race because, you know, anytime you talk about AI with someone, the first thing they think about is going to be ChatGPT. It's not going to be Claude. At least that's what I think. So another one that's not going to be a big surprise, but the other tool that I use almost daily is going to be NA10. Now, if you don't know what this is, NA10 is a sort of low-code automation tool, sort of a next evolution to Zapier if you've ever used that. And it has a lot of AI features, particularly an AI agent feature, which is sort of unlocking a bunch of uh, possibilities for your automations. And that's why a lot of people are starting to use it. But I don't actually use NA10 the way I see most people using it. Like for me, the most useful AI automations are not gonna be the one that you see on YouTube. Like most of the workflows that you see online, they sound really good in theory and on the screen, it looks really cool. Uh, but in a real business, you realize that you don't really need them. And I made a whole video on this if you're interested to dive deeper into this topic. But anyway, the automations that I built in NA10 are very specific to my business and mine only. Automations that are so specific to my business that, you know, I couldn't find a template on it or there would be no value of me sharing it with you guys because, again, it's just so specific to my business and my needs only. So let me give you an example. So for example, I have this automation and I'm tracking a few newsletter in my niche and I want to track the different sponsors that are sponsoring this newsletter. And these people are my competitors and I just want the automation to listen and look at all of the emails that come through and then uh, determine if there is a sponsor and then pick out the name of the sponsor, the link to the landing page, and then store all of this into a Google Sheet. Again, this is very specific to my business. I don't really see many business needing this kind of automation and I would see very little value to share this with a lot of people. And if I was to make a full YouTube videos walking you through this automation, probably no one would care. And I think that's probably the biggest upside of learning these tools for yourself, because I think that's probably the same thing for you. You probably have a lot of things in your business that you can think it'd be great to automate and you can't find a template, you can't find a video online. But if you know how to use the tool, then you may be able to automate those things in NA10. Okay, so for the next tool, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit because I said I didn't use any other LLM other than ChatGPT except for Deep Research. And for this, I use Gemini. So if you don't know what Deep Research is, essentially it's going to be, you know, sort of the equivalent of you going through uh, a Google search and picking out a bunch of different sources and sort of aggregating all of that knowledge into one place. Well, Gemini is going to do that for you with this Deep Research feature. And that gives you sort of a good idea of the, you know, the facts around the topic that you want to research. And obviously, ChatGPT does have this uh, deep research feature, but again, I just prefer 
the Gemini one. I think it's a lot faster. I think it's a lot better. And it's also free. And I do deep research for a few different things. New client market research, new tools comparison, personal life things. Essentially, every time that I'm thinking, oh, I need to do a bit of research, go on Google, check out a few websites. Instead of doing that, I just do a Gemini deep search. And essentially, anything that I know ChatGPT is not going to give me an in-depth uh, market research kind of respond then that's when I use the deep research feature. Now, here is the thing. I actually rarely read the actual research. So, you know, the, the research is going to look uh, something like this, going to be very long, very detailed. But what I do is that based on that research, I then prompt uh, the LLM, so Gemini, to give me a bunch of information that I actually specifically want. So, you know, I tell it based on this research, then do this, do that, give me the answer for this and that, because now I know that it has a lot of aggregate knowledge on that topic and that the answer will be, you know, something that is more factual than anything else and that's going to be a better answer than I would get with just the one prompt that I would put in chat GPT. Because now Gemini has this whole research as part of its context window. The next tool is Fireflies AI, and that's more of a set and forget type of tool that I use. And I don't really use it that often, but when I actually do need it, then it's really the lifesaver. So if you don't know what Fireflies is, it's essentially an AI meeting assistant. So, you know, whatever platform you're using, Zoom, Meet, Google Meet, whatever, it's going to join into your call. And here is an example of what this looks like, uh, but essentially just join in the call, listen into everything, and then uh, give you a transcript of the call. And obviously with AI, sort of give you a you know summary, a structured summary with a list of actions to take, a list of to-dos based on what was said in the conversation. So that way you don't have to take any notes during your meeting. You can just focus on the call and trust that the AI will then give you what you need from what was said. And again, most of the time with my clients in the calls, I don't really have to look at the transcript. I sort of kind of know what I need, uh, but sometimes I sort of forget what was said and exactly what the client wanted. That's when I go back in and see the transcript and see the different things that Fireflies picked up on that we agreed on doing. Not much else to say about this tool. Again, it's really a set and forget kind of thing. And uh, if you wanted to get fancy, you could do a bunch of things with that transcript. I just tend to use it in a very simple way because that's that's just enough for me. Okay, so the next tool is Lovable. And again, I'm a cheapskate. I don't need to pay for it. The free plan is totally fine for me, so I don't pay for the paid plan. But if you never use Lovable, what this is is essentially a, you know, a way to create apps and website by chatting with AI, just like it says here, uh, where essentially with just natural language, you're gonna tell it the kind of websites that you want, the feel, the branding, the colors, and it's gonna go ahead and code it for you. And obviously you'll be able to see a, a nice preview of the website or the app that you wanna build. It's similar to Bolt, Bubble, or Replit, if you've ever used any of those. Now, I wouldn't use Lovable to build a website from scratch. I think that there are a lot of problems with just using those no-code AI tools for building a website, and especially in the customization and management. So I prefer to use a good old WordPress website where I can get into the backend and make some changes manually. But what I do is that I use Lovable to create a mockup or an MVP of the kind of page that I want before I go ahead and implement it myself into WordPress. So this is an example of a redesign that I'm working on. And you know, just through prompts, I'm gonna be able to create this mockup that I like very much, and then just recreate this in WordPress manually. And as a side note, I really think that's gonna be sort of the, the future of SaaS AI tools. That's gonna be where you can you know prompt your way to most things, but then you still have the uh, freedom to manually go in and edit it yourself. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable to have a SaaS tool that I'm using that is entirely AI and can only be editing through prompts. So for website, for example, that would be something like a hybrid between AI and WordPress. And I saw recently that Adamantor is coming up with a new plugin that would sort of help achieve exactly this. Another way that I use Lovable is to create mini tools. So for example, if I take this website, which is mine, but they have a ranking of the account on Instagram with the most followers. And obviously what you would want here is sort of a dynamic ranking where it would, you know, either through scraping or API and keep track of the follower number so that it gives you the most accurate number and you don't have to manually update it every day. Uh, so that would be something that would be a great example of how to use Lovable to create those sort of mini apps uh, without too much coding knowledge and to be able to easily implement that on your website. And that's probably using Lovable for about 20% of what it can actually do. Uh, but since I'm not a developer, that's enough for me. And so these are the tools that I really use on a weekly or daily basis. Now, if you wanna dig deeper into uh, AI automations and specifically the kind of ones that I would recommend for you, then go ahead and check out this last video that I made where I go into very detailed explanations of those AI automations that I recommend every service providers to have. But if you just want to keep updated with new AI automations or workflows that I built, then go ahead and subscribe to my free newsletter. That's going to be in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.